On this adventure with Look Amu, we walk the rim of a volcano after checking into Vanuatu, and I take my drone for a swim. We checked, the flag is the right way up. And once again, we are under quarantine. 74 nautical miles to go. Dinner, sleep, Vanuatu. Take a dip in the ocean, spend the day in the sunlight. Let's go back to our old ways, cause these ears they are catching up. Dress for night duty because we're safety monkeys. Uh, we're in the tropics, but it's cold, as you know. So, wet weather gear, uh, harness, self-inflating life jacket. With very uncomfortable crotch straps so that should you fall overboard you can't fall out of your harness which we've read about uh, Nautilus waterproof radio which we actually take diving with us but it's got a radio in it and uh, GPS coordinates set to the radio station that the or VHF station that the boat is on beanie because it's cold now, it is technically 24 degrees outside but we sit in the wind for a couple of hours. It's really cold. And then, last but not least, attached to the boat. And attached to the safety lines. And then, phone for entertainment. <laughs> there's, a, there's an e-perb on the vest which you can set off and uh, should you end up in the water. And this is self-inflating. So you hit the water, Ooh. up you go. Uh, knife. So, one-handed, get it out. Nice little sharp, very nice actually. Uh, so if you were to fall overboard, uh, I'm gonna get dragged along at all, whoever it is, because we swap all this stuff off, over. Uh, if you get dragged along and drag underwater te technically, so it's to cut this if you can't actually undo it under under strain, or if you get trapped into anything else, you could potentially cut yourself free. And our other rule is one headphone only, so you can hear. So the other one goes my bra. Good to go. See you at midnight, baby. Not sure if you can see the moon behind me but when the uh, when the clouds clear and the moon comes out. It really is quite beautiful. That, my friends, is Vanuatu. And that little puffy thing right there is an exploding volcano. As the sun comes up, we're only an hour and a half away, but we can certainly see the volcano from here.
volcano when you can see steam hissing out just behind you at the waterline in Anchorage. There's a whole lot of uh, thermal vents along this cliff here uh, and we're looking for the one we saw last night. But so far, so far Jamie, it's been a little uneventful. It has been uneventful. <laughs> it's not the only one can crack that joke. So how was your first taste of Vanuatu bureaucracy? It was really good, yeah. Yeah? It was just filling out some paperwork uh, that we hadn't already filled out and it was very, very easy. Uh, and it cost us a lot less than we thought. So oh really? We think we think they probably made a mistake. Right. Yeah. So it was $150 Australian all up. Oh. Cool. <laughs> Club was built by the local village to welcome yachties. It's here we met Stanley, the yacht club manager. It was a great place to meet other cruisers, arrange tours, and it had a million dollar view. We went exploring through the local village and walked past a whole lot of chickens and outbuildings and stuff. And I stumbled upon this little girl called Esther, and when I asked her what she was doing, she responded very simply with that fact she was grinding. Some sort of nut. I was flying the drone just like any other day, and as I got close to the water, the signal dropped out. We've just lost the drone in the ocean. The camera's naked, and the drone's now naked. GoPro. I hope you're enjoying this adventure. Please remember at the end to give us a YouTube thumbs up, subscribe and share it with your friends. We are heading into the Yacht Club. Um, we gave a man called Stanley, who we met this morning, all our money. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, as he was going to he Lena... He trustworthy. <laughs> he did look trustworthy. Uh, he was going to Lenacow, which is a town on the other side of the island. Uh, and he was going to change it into Batu for us, because we want to go to the volcano tomorrow. And they only take Batu. What do you do the day before climbing a volcano? You watch Dante's Peak, of course. We headed out on a very bumpy one hour trip in the back of a ute off to see the volcano. After arriving and paying our fee, we were greeted with a ceremonial dance. Periodically, there'd be an explosion, and you would actually see this shockwave wow. go through the air and go through the clouds, and you'd feel it hit your body, uh, and it scared the hell out of you. And then that would be followed briefly by the, the sound of that explosion. Jesus. So that happened a few times. Then you walk up to the next viewing location. I'm standing in my way. There is no safety rails. There is no um, path or anything like that. You can feel it in your chest. And you it's can loud. you can see like the um, pre-explosion, the, the percussion. 
Yeah, like the this sound shockwave, sound. Yeah. yeah. You are literally on the edge of a vol volcano right. where if you fell off the edge of this, you would fall, I'm guessing, you know, one or 200 metres. It doesn't smell as bad as I thought. But it is smoky. So number two, you can now see little bits of the lava, and again, when those explosions took place, they absolutely went straight through and scared the hell out of you. Now the third location, you can actually see right down here, you can actually see the lava. Um, however, after these explosions occur, probably a minute or so later, there'd be this plume of ash and smoke that would come through that you could really not breathe through and it was getting in your eyes and, and all that sort of stuff. So you sort of had, we had some like bandanas around our faces to try and breathe as well as like a hanky. Um, and you know, you'd be squinting even though I was wearing glasses um, and you had to ultimately just turn away. In the midst of all that sort of smoke where you really couldn't see anything, there seemed to be no organisation as to how you get back because people wanted to leave at that point. And by that stage it's dark. So it's dark, you would say probably one in five people had a torch. We had torches. There was no guide sort of taking you back down. So collectively people made their way back down um, and it was over. It was a fantastic experience. Um, I would highly recommend it. It's not the safest thing I think you could probably do. Um, and you certainly got a feeling for when the lava explosions took place, you know, one that just seems to be a little bit bigger than the others, there would be lava that could hit you. Um, and in fact, on the path, you can clearly see they've been using the same path for a long time, there was uh, clearly a bit of lava that hit that must have been about the size of a washing machine at some stage. Um, so it must happen from time to time. Great experience. Very pleased we did it. On the next adventure with Look Immune, game on. We race Aqualong 3. We explore Skull Cave and we discover unusual aquatic life. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with your friends. Oh.